Layer masks are one of the easiest things to get hung up on in Photoshop, but they're also one of the most useful tools for your editing. So in this video, I wanna show you an easier way to think of layer masks, along with a few helpful ways you can use them to transform your photos in Photoshop. Now for the first example, we're gonna just get an idea of how layer masks work as a whole, and then we'll go and get into some more nuanced versions of how you can use them with both adjustment layers as well as with individual images to customize your projects. Now in this first example here, we have one color fill layer, which is this big blue thing that's covering the whole canvas. And beneath that, if I click the eyeball icon here to hide that layer, we have an image layer of a nice little cat sleeping. Now, the whole point of a layer mask is to allow you to selectively hide certain areas of a layer to reveal whatever else is beneath it. And in this particular case, we have a color fill layer directly above my image layer, meaning that it is hiding it completely. However, However, in this particular case with a color fill layer, we have this white box that is beside it known as a layer mask. By default, layer masks will appear as a white box like this, meaning that they are fully visible. Now you might be thinking, why is it that white means visible? Well, it's because in the world of layer masks, everything that is 100% white will be fully visible on that particular layer, while anything that is black will be fully transparent on that particular layer. To give you an example of this, if I click on this layer mask right here, which is currently white, meaning everything on that layer is visible. If I press Command or Control I to invert it and therefore turn it fully black, you can see that now all of that blue is invisible on my image because I have a layer mask that is completely invisible. So although the layer is still turned on, as you can see by this eyeball icon here, it is still active because of this black layer mask, it is being hidden. However, if I turn this black layer mask back to white by pressing command or control I, this will now make that layer visible once again. So the little saying that can be helpful for you to remember this is that white reveals and black conceals. Anything that is 100% white is going to be visible on your canvas. Anything that is 100% black is going to be invisible on your canvas, at least in terms of the layer mask here. Now, what if you want to go and selectively control the visibility of a layer mask? Because in this case, what you just saw with the command or control I option to invert the mask, we basically have fully visible or fully invisible, which isn't really that helpful. But here's where we can mix things up with the help of the brush tool, for example. By selecting the brush tool by pressing B, we can go and choose a foreground color of either white or black, depending on whether we want to add or remove from our layer mask. In this particular case, since I have a fully white layer mask, that means I want to add transparency to particular areas by painting black with my brush tool. So with my foreground color set to black, with the brush tool selected, a 100% opacity and flow, and in this particular case, I'm just using a soft round brush like so, now, by clicking on that layer mask, in this case, the color fill one layer mask, you can tell it's selected by this white box around it like so. I can now scale up my brush, and because I am going to be painting black, which in the world of layer masks is 100% transparent, wherever I paint is going to make the blue color fill layer invisible and therefore reveal whatever is beneath, which in this case is that image layer. So as you can see, although I was painting black, that black is not actually visible on my image, but instead it was painted onto my layer mask and now appears as this big black spot in the middle of my layer mask thumbnail. And therefore I can tell that wherever is inside of this black spot on this particular layer is going to be transparent. And that is why we can see the image showing through beneath it. So anywhere that I paint black while that layer mask is active and selected is going to hide whatever is on that current layer that the layer mask is attached to. Now you can do the opposite of this as well by painting white into any black areas to add back visibility. So with the same brush settings as before, I can now go over to my foreground color and switch it to white. So now my foreground color is set to white. My layer mask is still selected, but now when I go and paint over any areas that I see the underlying cat layer, you can see that I'm now revealing blue, which is just revealing that color fill layer 
because we're adding visibility back onto that layer mask. So it really is pretty straightforward when it all breaks down. White will reveal anything on the layer mask while black will hide anything on the layer mask. As for any of the varying shades of gray between 100% white and 100% black, you'll get different levels of transparency. So for example, if I click on my foreground color here and then choose like a middle gray color such as this, I'll click OK. Now with that 50% gray color and that layer mask still selected, if I go and paint over an area like so, you can see that it removes that blue color fill layer, but it's not fully removed because there's still a little bit of that blue color showing on top of the underlying image layer. And that is because when you paint gray onto a layer mask, it's only going to remove a certain percentage of that particular layer. So in this case, because I have 50% gray active, anything that I paint over will become 50% visible as you can see with these two brush strokes right here. So now with this picture of how layer masks work, let's go through a couple more examples with some more realistic uses of how you would use these layer masks in your photo editing. Now, although we still have several examples to work through, if you're starting to connect the dots with layer masks and how they all work, let me know by hitting the like button down below. And while you're here, make sure to grab a copy of my free 30 page Photoshop quick start guide ebook sharing the six key areas of Photoshop that you need to know and make the program feel easy. I'll leave a link for that down below if you're interested. In this next example, let's say that I only want to add some contrast and brightening to the sky of this particular image. Well, an easy way that we could add this adjustment to begin with is with a curves adjustment layer. So within the adjustments panel, I'll click on the curves adjustment here, and then I'll just go and add some quick contrast by increasing the highlights decreasing the shadows, and then maybe playing around with the mid-tones to make it pop a little bit more like so. So now we just have a little bit more of a dramatic and contrasty sky. But the problem is, is that it makes the foreground way too dark. So I only want this adjustment to be visible up here in the sky. Well, since we only want parts of this adjustment to be visible, we can use our layer mask to help us with that. Because in this particular case, and with every single adjustment layer that you create, you'll automatically get a layer mask as you see here indicated by this white box. And as you now know, that white box means that everything from this adjustment or that layer is going to be visible on your canvas. However, let's go and hide this adjustment completely by turning this layer mask black. So first clicking on that layer mask, I'll press Command or Control I, and now everything related to this curves adjustment layer is invisible on my canvas. But just like you saw before, we can now use our brush tool to selectively paint back areas of visibility so that this curves adjustment layer is only visible in the areas that we paint. Now that might sound a little bit confusing, but just stick with me here because it's gonna make sense really soon here. So with the brush tool selected, I'm going to use these same settings as before, but this time I want my foreground color to be set to 100% white like so, which means we'll be adding visibility onto this layer mask. With the curves adjustment layer mask thumbnail selected, indicated by that white box around the mask, painting with that white foreground color brush, I can now go and add visibility of this adjustment, of that curves adjustment, wherever I go and paint. So now this curves adjustment that we created previously is only being applied to the sky, but not in the foreground where it was applying too much of an adjustment. So turning this on and off, you can see how we've now added that selective adjustment, and this will apply for every single adjustment layer you use in Photoshop. And without the help of layer masks, it would be a lot harder to create isolated adjustments such as this. Now for our third and final example, I wanna show you how you can use layer masks on regular image layers and how they work when there is nothing beneath a particular layer. Such as in this case, we just have a single image layer. I'll just click on the lock icon to unlock it and that way we can make some adjustments here. But as you can see with this particular image layer, there is no layer mask beside it. And unlike all of our adjustment layers that automatically come with a layer mask, we need to manually create one for our image layers. Luckily, it's very easy to do just by clicking on the layer that you want to add your mask to and then going down to the layer mask icon, which is the rectangle with the circle inside of it. So clicking on that will add a new white layer mask to your selected layer like so. Now let's say I want to make part of this image transparent so that the left half of the photo is completely invisible. Well, because we don't have anything underneath this image layer, whatever we remove from it is going to reveal transparency. 
So with this white layer mask selected, I'll once again use my brush tool by pressing B. And then this time, since I want to add transparency to this mask or hide parts of that layer, I'm going to set my foreground color to black because remember, white is 100% visible, black is 100% transparent. All of the shades of gray between white and black represent different levels of transparency. So in this case, since we want to remove stuff, black is going to be the foreground color for our brush. So now with that image layer a layer mask selected indicated by that white box around it here, I can now go and click and paint over the areas that I want to remove. And because I'm adding black onto that layer mask and therefore making parts of this layer invisible, it's allowing me to selectively hide parts of the image and this gray checkerboard in the background indicates transparency. So then that way, when you go and export this photo as say a PNG format to preserve the transparency, you will have this partly transparent image wherever you go and share it online in the future. So this is really helpful for a non-destructive way of adding transparency to a layer so it's only visible in a certain area. And the reason it's non-destructive is because as you've seen with all the other examples so far, you could just change your foreground color to white, for example, and then I could go and paint back in visibility of the pixels that were previously being hidden. So rather than a layer mask permanently deleting things, it's simply hiding them from view on your canvas based on whether they are black or white on your layer mask. Now in this one final bonus example, I wanna show you how layer masks are also really useful for removing backgrounds non-destructively so that you can use them in a lot more ways than just using selective adjustments. In this particular case, I have an active selection around this product bottle that I created with the object selection tool that if you wanna learn more about, I'll leave a video up here for you to check out. However, I'm gonna show you two different ways that we can remove this background, one destructively and then one non-destructively with a layer mask. The the destructive method would simply be doing something like right clicking inside of that selection and then going layer via cut, for example. This would add the selection contents onto a new layer. So if I hide the bottom most layer, you can see that we have the selection of the bottle that we were looking for. However, if I wanted to go and add any extra details around parts of this bottle, perhaps the selection was messed up a little bit and I wanted to refine it, this is not possible because if you look at our image thumbnail here, there is no extra information outside of our selection and that is because everything beyond it is permanently deleted. However, if we were to do this with a layer mask, the story would be a little bit different. So I'll press command or control Z to undo this and now I have an active selection once again around the same product. But this time we're going to apply a layer mask by clicking on that image layer and then with that active selection I'll click on the layer mask icon like so. This will add that selection automatically to our layer mask so that the selection contents are the only visible areas on this mask indicated by that white box here. However, because all of this background information is only hidden and not deleted due to our layer mask, that means I could go onto this layer mask by clicking on the layer mask thumbnail here. And with the brush tool selected, for example, and white set to my foreground color, I could easily go and paint in additional areas around the selection and reveal more pixels wherever I want because all of them are not permanently deleted, but instead they were just hidden because of the layer mask. So when it comes time to refine a selection, using a layer mask makes it possible and easy to do with options that you do not have if you were to just permanently delete the background. So that is just another huge advantage to layer masks, allowing you to remove backgrounds non-destructively because you're never permanently deleting the pixels around your selection. You're only hiding them with the layer mask. Hopefully you now feel a lot more confident with how layer masks work, but more importantly, how useful they can be for your photo editing. Now to see a more in-depth view of how layer masks can be used alongside your photo editing process, check out this video here, where I walk through a simple process to transform your images in Photoshop with the help of layer masks and many, many more adjustments. Again, just click the video here to check that out.